Hello and welcome to the Ray Show Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Ray, and I hope everybody is rested and uh, put back together after the Halloween holiday. I um, hope everybody's enjoying their November and we give everybody a week or two of a breath there. But we're back and uh, going to rock and roll here to the end of the year. Um, got a really good episode today with Mr. Braun Daler from uh, The Mighty Bastodon. And uh, he's going to be discussing uh, their new album, Hushed and Grim. Um, and they also have a tour they're about to embark on, a co-headlining run with Opeth. So uh, we'll get to that chat here in just a few. But I wanted to thank everyone for all the great feedback we got from the uh, the last few episodes, especially the Fee Wable episode. Uh, didn't know there were as many Tubes fans that were uh, listeners of, of our podcast and and uh what what a great time and uh what a great guy um but we've got more promos coming up for you by the end of the year more exciting guests uh we probably will will take a little bit of the break at the beginning of the new year but other than that you got new ratio episodes coming every tuesday and hey we are we so appreciate all your support and all the love we're getting uh through your messages and uh, your comments, and uh, we couldn't be happier with how things are going, and, and just thank you so much for all of your, your support. It means everything to us. Uh, but coming up now, we've got our talk with Mr. Braun Daler. All righty, so we have Braun Daler from the Mighty Mastodon on the podcast today. How are you doing, Braun? I'm doing good. Um, I just uh, got out of the shower, and I'm all I'm all cleaned up and ready to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, right on, man. Uh, well, look, you're about to embark on your first tour in some time for the new record, Hushed and Grim, which is out now for everybody. How excited are you to get out and play this monster and get out of the damn house? Uh, I don't know. I'm. I, there's actually. I'm not. I'm. I'm I feel like. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I'm not nervous about it, but I'm, I'm so used to being at home now. Um, right. I'm not used to like, you know, sleeping on my shelf and, uh, you know, being out there plus being out there this time is going to be different. There's no, like no guests are allowed backstage. And so, um, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, but I am looking forward to playing some of the new stuff and seeing what the reaction is. You know, I'm, uh, I'm always curious, you know, what, the fan reaction is going to be to the new stuff. And we have like a new visual show that's going to be going on behind us. I'm, I'm, I am, am hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic that it's all going to go swimmingly and everything's going to be great. Um, but I just want to get those first couple shows under my belt and then I'll feel more comfortable. Right. Right. Well, it's a, it's a strange, uh, time right now. And how much, were you guys thinking about non-traditional ways to present this record, just seeing how things with the pandemic keep going on and on? Was the traditional tour always in your in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't know any any way else to do it really, except for doing some kind of live stream event or something like that, which uh, you know is always an option. But um, we were just sort of like a lot of bands. Um, just seeing how things played out and really uh, treating it more like, you know, like a moving target, you know, and sort of holding our breath a little bit and being like, oh, hopefully we can just do it and it'll be okay and everyone will be all right and, you know, uh, people won't get sick and we won't get sick. So we just have to go out there and do it and see how, see how, how it goes and try to be as safe as possible. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Sort of, it's sort of rolling the dice a little bit, I think. But um, we, there's been some examples. There's been some some friends of ours bands that have gone out and been successful with it, and it's been okay. So, uh, it's not completely going out there in, in the dark. You know, it's we, we have there there are some uh, there's some people that have done it before us over the last few months. So I think it'll be okay. Well, well, getting back to the record, you know, there's so much to digest here musically and emotionally, as with most of your records. As artists, I mean, you guys have never been afraid to address loss, grief, other real confronting emotions. And in Hushed and Grim, you know, it's a tribute to your late manager, Nick John. Respectfully, I mean, could you discuss what he meant to you guys? 
Oh, Nick was just, um, it's, it's almost difficult to speak of him in the past tense. You know, it's, it's still kind of like that. Uh, he just was, he was such an awesome guy. He just was the nicest guy that you, you'd ever meet. And, uh, uh, that's first and foremost, you know, he just was a wonderful human being. He would just do anything for anybody. And I know that like, uh, posthumously, I guess you, you hear this about people, you know, um, that have passed on, you know, that, that you, that everyone concentrates just on the good things, which is a great thing. Um, but really with Nick, he really was just an amazing person. I mean, I, I you're, you're not going to meet anybody that has anything bad to say about the guy. He just was so solid, you know? Um, yeah. and just having somebody like that, that was in our corner, uh, that was always, just always had us, the band at the forefront of his mind. You know, he just worked really hard for us, uh, got in the trenches in those areas where we just didn't know who to talk to, who, you know, he just, uh, came along right at the right time, right when Leviathan was about to come out and really, um, you know, got us all those opportunities that we needed to move us up the ladder a little bit, you know? Um, and so he was really the perfect person to, to sort of manage our, our band, you know, and, and help us out. Uh, every band needs it. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of bands, we've been around for a while and I've met a lot of managers and I've, uh, you know, this, I don't, you don't meet too many bands that have a manager that they feel the way that we felt about Nick, you know, he just was the fifth member and a very integral uh, piece of our puzzle and uh, we just I just miss talking to him every day on the phone you know right. and I miss hanging out with him you know as a, as a human being as a person uh, but yeah um, so we wanted to make sure that we honored him properly you know and sent him off properly uh, I we didn't know what it was going to be we certainly didn't uh, think it was going to be a double album. Um, but it just turned out that way. Well, how daunting is it going into a double album now in this day and age with people's attention spans? Cause there's so many rewards on this record, you know, and you have to, you have to give the album the time to, to, to just come to life, you know, in so many ways. And, and how daunting is it, presenting something this long form of a musical project to your fans right now? Um, you know, I, I can't really sit and worry about, you know, what they're going to think, you know, all I can do is, you know, and, and I feel like if you put the time in, which you don't have to, you know, yeah. It's not, it's not required of anyone to sit and listen to this whole thing front to back, you know, as this, like, like you said, this daunting task, which I, I totally understand and totally get that, you know, for some people it might just be too much music, you know, all at once to consume, which is fine. Uh, but there might be a, a place in, in your life that it does make sense to put this on. Maybe you have a long flight. Maybe you have a long drive. Maybe you're working on some art project that's going to take a long time. And this could be your companion piece for that. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, so, and I do, I, you know, I've, I've seen the criticisms of it being, you know, just too much, which I've had, there's been albums in my life where, where I'm like, is this the same album? Are we still listening to this? So I can't believe how long this is. It's crazy, you know? And, um, so, Um, being in a band that has presented this big chunk of, of music, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that, that, that it hits, you know, for people in the right way and, and, and is that they love it as much as we do. Uh, but yeah, that's all that we can really control is, is, you know, I've heard people say, well, they should have just cut like three or four songs. And I'm thinking, which ones, you know, oh, that, yeah. was, that was the problem. That was the problem that we were having. You know, we were like, I don't know what songs to get rid of, because if we're going to get it, if we're going to whittle this thing down to be a 55 minute album, we're going to have to get rid of six or seven songs. So which ones do you guys want to get rid of? And everyone was like, I don't I just like all these guys together and we can just put it out there and they can decide for themselves whether or not they're bored 
or maybe they can sink into it and uh, and it makes sense to them. But for us, for the four guys, that, that, that what Macedon puts out depends on the taste of the four of us. We all decided that we had gone home, each person, and listened to all 15 songs back front to back, and uh, we liked it. You know, and we didn't. I didn't get bored, and I thought it was, I thought it was really beautiful, and uh, I thought it made sense at this moment in time. I know people's attention spans and all that good stuff that that, that is talked about, but I think that there's a, a good section of our fan base that that uh, that that appreciates all this music, uh, all this new music, you know? Um, Absolutely. So I don't know. It, it'll be up to the ages to, uh, to decide it as it always is, you know, when something first comes, I remember when Leviathan came out and people were pissed off about that. People were <laughs> mad about blood and thunder. They were like, it's too simple. Da, 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 da. And then, uh, crack the sky. When that came out, people are pissed off about that. They don't like oblivion. It's too poppy sounding or something like that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, as soon as something comes out, and then, you know, 10 years later, oh, my God, it's a masterpiece. You know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Even The Hunter, with people poo-pooed to the moon and back, was being the worst album we ever put out. And, oh, my God, it's terrible. Now it's like I see all these people saying, well, now that I've listened to it again or now that I've had some, you know, 10 years to digest it, it's actually a really great album. I love it. So what it doesn't, you know, and I'm the same way with music as as a consumer myself, you know with my favorite bands, you know, some, I like these three albums from this, this person, or, you know, I like these, you know, if you're lucky enough to have as long of a career as we've had, you know, you're going to, you know, as soon as you put out your second album, it's not as good as the first one or vice versa, you know? Right. Uh, so, um, you know, the only, you know, the only thing that we can control is if the four of us love what we're doing and we try to be honest with our art and we try to be, uh, we try to put a lot of emotion into it, a lot of heart. And I think that there is a deep, deep heart to Hushed and Grimm. And if it hits you in the right way, I think it can be very rewarding. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'm, I'm sorry. Right, <laughs> you know? right, right. Well, it's, it's living it with it since it's been out. It's, it's slowly becoming my favorite Mastodon album in so many ways because it's, like you said, I, I'm listening to it on a lot of times when I'm working on something and it just really gets under your skin um, and I've read that you guys started out, the first song you guys all wrote together was The Crux. Am I correct? For this uh, one? I feel like, I feel, well, I feel like that was the one that was, the, the, the one that was completed first. I feel like that was, that was done. See, it means more like a, like a, a garden and you have all these different, uh, you know, seeds that you plant, which are, which are, and then you sort of just water them every day and go and check on them and then. So the crux was the one that I guess bloomed first. Uh, so, um, and I felt like, okay, this is like a complete idea. This is finished. So that, that the crux was finished first, but everything else was sort of growing at the same time, you know, pain right. and anchor was, was coming up and, <clears throat> um, it just, it's, you know, you, 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 you just nip and tuck and, and you grow things, you are like, Oh, this needs a bridge or this needs like an ending. You, you always, we always kind of know when something's missing from a song and we always know when maybe there's too much going on and we need to scale back a little bit. Like we need to get rid of that riff or we need to, this structure is bizarre. Why does it have three bridges? We need to get rid of one of these or, you know, um, so that, and those like little conundrums will be stuck in your mind and you'll have restless nights of sleep, no sleep. And, and tossing and turning and trying to like arrange songs in your mind as you, as a, as the clock turns to like four in the morning, you know? So right. it's definitely, you know, writing an album, especially something like this, where we, all we were doing was writing and writing. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's a roller coaster ride of emotions when you're putting something together, any album together, you know, it's, uh, you're always like sitting and thinking how it could be better or, or you know when something's just not right, you know, and and then you you're just trying to fix it, and you're sort of ramming your head up against the wall for for days and days, and then finally it uh, it reveals itself what 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 it was supposed to be. Uh, so yeah, um, you always have to sort of trust that it will come, and don't force it or push it, you know, and just let it happen, and 
luckily, you know, people get this big slab of music at the end and they're like, oh, that just came together. But yeah, it took like two years of, of really actually going down and rolling your sleeves up and doing the work. Right, right. And you guys had, you know, just from the way the world is, you had extra time this to, to really focus on the songs and spend more time with them. And it, you know, it's it, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, which of these songs are you looking forward to uh, playing live the most? Um, I'm looking, I really want to do the first song, Pain With An Anchor. I really want to, like, play that and get it, get one repetition in front of people under my belt just because it opens with me on those quads and I need to nail those. And, um, and, um, I'm not saying I'm panicking, but I, <laughs> I can, I can see a situation where I flub one of those and, and then the whole thing gets, it just kind of crumbles, you know, a lot of, but that's the situation with a lot of Mastodon songs where it's like, um, one, one, uh, you know, one misstep and the whole thing comes crashing down. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to playing that. And I, and I love that last riff. I think it's just big and heavy. And, and then the, the, this cool, like vocal swell thing that we created and, uh, comes in and it just sounds super evil. And, uh, and, I, and I'm excited to see if there's going to be some people headbanging to that. I, I like to watch people headbang. Right. Right on, man. Uh, oh, how are these, uh, how are, how is your catalog? How are you, um, this massive catalog, how is this growing with you as the years go on? Meaning, how are these songs, you know, they, they, they have the life of their own, and how do you see them going as the years go on? Do you have different relationships with things you did earlier? And, and what? how do you put a fucking set list together with so much out there? Well, it's really hard to put a set list together, you know. Uh, it's difficult because we have like 100 songs or maybe more than a hundred songs now. Uh, and it all sort of comes down to what's in the wheelhouse of, of our band. Like when we're about to go on tour, cause everybody's so busy and doing, you know, we don't have, you know, I mean, it's our job, you know, to go out there and play. Uh, but also we want to, you know, have a set list, um, you know, that has stuff that we're good at playing, you know, um, and then we want to have a couple that we resurrect, you know, yeah. uh, like naked burn is something we've recently resurrected, you know, and, oh, that's a cool song. Uh, you know, you kind of go back and flip through the, the photo album of songs and you see one that, you know, you dust off and, oh, that one was cool. Let's play that. We'll see what the reaction reaction is. Uh, and then you have the standard fair, you know, you like, if you, like it's not the Mastodon show is not over unless they play Blood and Thunder. And they're certainly not going to not play Blood and Thunder, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, and we've we have not played it many times, mainly because of you know certain people in our band that that uh, get mad at it or, you know, I yeah. mean, which happens happens with a lot of bands. You know, they get mad at their at, at their fans' favorite song. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'm... but you gotta you gotta be like thankful for those songs. Like that's the song that puts you where you are. So you gotta give it to the people. You can you can be self-indulgent as well but you know you know, you, you got to have some give and take there um so it's hard you know putting it together because especially on a co-headlining tour where we don't have as much time as we normally would on a, on a proper headlining situation you know, we're going out with opeth and so um it's hard because we do want to play a lot of we want to play new stuff as well but i don't want to alienate people because i've been that fan i go to this show and i'm like i want to see my my favorite band, but I don't even have their new record. And I haven't even heard any songs off of it. You know what right, I mean? If they, right. play, if they play nothing but it, then I'm kind of left out in the cold, you know, I'm like, Oh man, all I heard was one song from my favorite album. So I try to take everybody's feelings into consideration when I'm putting a set list together. I try to put myself in the shoes of a fan, which I am a fan. And I just recently went and saw Metallica. They played a lot of old stuff, but, but granted they weren't on a tour that was supporting any brand new album or anything. So they have the ability to sort of float around and play whatever, uh, with us. I feel like there are, I have seen a lot of people that really like the new stuff and they do want to see, um, some new stuff and we're very excited to play it. So we are going to play a bunch of new songs. Um, you know, but so it's, it's, it's tough, but, uh, you know, if that's the toughest, uh, thing that, that, my face then then i'm doing pretty good <laughs> in my <laughs> life you know? exactly man exactly you know 
this record it's so bold like the ride you guys are on and for a lack of a better way to describe this you, you just mentioned metallica which you know you guys are in that league to me and 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 definitely have a quality control that they have but i look at you guys and it's almost like those first couple of Lollapalooza lineups that that happened in our late teens um you guys had that almost that vibe where you could move within genres you guys if, if you'd have been in that space and time would have fit right in on those bills what what do you attribute that vibe of respect that you guys command almost to? I mean, is it the music or is it is it your manager Nick John like working with you guys back in the day or what? What do you attribute that vibe of respect to? Um, I'm not sure. I I think I don't know. I think that uh, I think we it wasn't really an intentional thing, but it just so happens the way that we create music together. We're kind of all over the map, you know, genre wise. And so I think that, you know, that's, that has shown through over the years, like the, the, the different uh, musical palettes that we've been able to sort of put together can float around and be, uh, you know, wherever we want to go, you know, but I mean, it's, it's, it's in heavy music. That's where, it, where it is, but we could open for Slayer or we could open for Queens of the Stone Age or we could, you know what I mean? Or right. we could, so we can, um, we can hang with all those different bands, uh, because we've, we've put all that into our sound. We have, you know, we can, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm too I'm too close to the project to be able to comment on you know how people view us if there's respect there or what it what it, you know I don't know right I'm just going about my business and trying to um, with the other guys get in a room and make something that we all love you know together right, right. Uh, and just just experience the excitement that I had when we first got together which was wow i love uh what's happening and i like what i'm hearing i think that this is different and i've never heard heavy music sound like this and i think that that's really special and something that we all noticed off the bat and something that we all decided we wanted to chase you know and 20 something years later we're, we're still chasing it so well we're the better for it man right on uh well Speaking of, you know, moving within, being able to play with anybody, when are we going to see possibly a Mastodon King Diamond tour or maybe even a Mastodon Genesis tour? Oh, Genesis. I don't know. If <laughs> I, 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 doubt, I, I doubt we're on their radar. <laughs> uh, uh, but King Diamond, man, that, yeah, that would be amazing. That would be probably, um, probably one of the only, like, big, you know, for me anyways, personally, uh, out of the big tours we've done with the bands that I grew up on and, you know, my, my, my heroes is growing up, uh, King Diamond is probably the last we've played with King Diamond, but you know, festivals, festivals and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, he's probably the last one. The last laminate left for me to collect <laughs> would be a King Diamond, uh, Macedon tour. Uh, because I got the Judas Priest one, I got the Iron Maiden one a few times over, I got the Black Sabbath, uh, Metallica, Slayer, Tool, uh, you know, so we've been very lucky to go on tour with these legendary bands and, you know, befriend them. Uh, it's been really amazing. And, um, yeah, I owe a lot of that to Nick John. He really pushed for a lot of that stuff for us, you know, especially the Priest one, because uh, he knew how important it was to, to us and to me. And, um, and so, yes, I mean, King Diamond would be amazing. Right on. You know, right we'll on. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, maybe someday. Well, Brian, I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Is there any, uh, last final thoughts, any plugs you'd like to, uh, get to our listeners? Um, just, you know, I mean, we've been talking about Hushed and Grim. It's out there. Get it in your <laughs> ear holes if you, if you're, uh, if you like. If you like a, a doomier side of Mastodon, um, 
So yeah, that's well. Actually, I mean, I have I do have a clown coffee table book. I drew 101 clowns in 101 days during the lockdown, and uh, I put out a book that comes out on the 14th in just a couple days. Oh yeah, I mean, we're excited about this, and then I wanted to. Yeah. Wanted... Revolver magazine put it out. I just got a copy in the mail, and it just really looks great. Like they they nailed it. It's a it's a really awesome art book, and it has um, some commentary from some some friends that uh, that were receiving the, my texts every day during the pandemic. Yeah, the, the Daily Clown, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's coming out, and I'm a professional clown artist now, and she'll shall be addressed as as so. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's so good because you weren't you didn't have an Instagram to put this on, so you were just sending this to friends each day. Yeah. And I, I weren't you getting calls if the uh, if the clown wasn't delivered by a certain point in time? Yeah, people have... people started to depend on it, you know, and they <laughs> they thought they would get it at a certain time every day, and then if it was late or something, say I took a long time on one or two of them, they'd be like, "Yo, yo, what's up? Where's the clown?" <laughs> <You know? laughs> Well, it's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock p.m. We can't eat dinner without the clown. What's going on? <laughs> um, you know, everybody was locked inside. You know, nobody was leaving their houses, so there was very little. There was a few. Yeah, there wasn't much going on. You know, there was like the occasional new Netflix series would come out, and everyone would be salivating, like, "Oh my God, entertainment! <laughs> yes. New, new, that new, new." And uh, I don't know. For I guess for some people, the, the, the Daily Clown was a, a little bright spot in their day. So that was cool. Well, good. well, hey, everybody, make sure you go get this book. It sounds amazing. And, and it, how could it not be? 101 Clowns. I heard there's a Jaws clown in it. There is. There's oh, a man. Steve Harvey clown. There's a <laughs> There's a uh, Richard Simmons clown. There's a Texas Chainsaw clown. There's a Baphomet clown. There's all, it, it, it turns out that the clown is such an icon that it can be spread around to anything and everyone. So, um, it gets pretty twisted in that book. So I think it'd be a good bathroom reader at some point. I think to put that in your <laughs> flip, take a flip through while you're uh, while you're while you're releasing your 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 rainbows and unicorns. There you go, man. Well, well, well. Thank you so much, Braun. And and Hushed and Grim is out now. And uh, make sure you go get it, folks. Yeah, get it. All righty, that's our show for now, uh, for this week. And uh, everybody go out and get hushed and grim. How cool was Braun, man? Always a, a super cool dude and uh, a mastodon. You can't get, you know, as far as like what we do here at Ratio, they, they are high, as high in the artistic echelon as you can get for us. So uh, we want to thank him for being on the show and, uh, and telling us all about the new record. And that's uh, it for this week, but we will see you next week. Stay switched on, and we'll talk to you soon.